What you guys, today we're taking a look at is used PC parts worth it? And I'm going to go through all of the PC parts that you would need to build a computer. And is it worth buying these today in 2024? There's a lot of people flipping PCs today for profit, but is it really worth it? And what's the risks? Well, let's start off with SSDs or hard drives. Well, hard drives are definitely not worth buying used because they could have bad sectors. They could have mechanical issues and you never really know what the drive was used for. And some of these prices are pretty expensive on the used market. The same thing goes for an SSD. Depending on what type of SSD it is or NVMe, uh, you don't know what life it's led and how much life cycle it has left on that particular drive. And probably the more serious thing is you don't know what was actually stored on that drive. You don't know what the user was doing with that drive and what was stored on it. It could be some nasty stuff that has been stored on that drive. And again, now it's in your possession and you are now using it. And people don't know how to secure erase any information that is stored on the drive. Mechanical drives are pretty expensive used and you can sometimes buy these brand new just as much as it is for a used one. People get confused with the word refurbished. Refurbished could mean that it's just been formatted and that is what they class as refurbished. And then they'll go and resell it to you at a pretty expensive price. Now, if you're looking for uh, large storage capacity drives, these could have been used in data centers. They could have been using uh, some sort of server or NAS setup. And you just don't know how old the drive is. You should be looking at the label and seeing when that drive was produced and what sort of life it's had. Does it have a return policy on it? And is there any warranty left on that drive? Uh, what type of brand of drive is it? But that's the sort of thing you need to look out for. And that's why I would not recommend buying used drives. Now, before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro, cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. You can use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you've done that, you can submit your order and use PayPal to pay for your purchase. They will then send you your key and you can then activate your version of Windows just like you see on the screen right now. Let's talk about motherboards. What do you need to look out for with motherboards? Now, sometimes people might think motherboards are a sure bet. But these could have bent pins in the actual socket. Old sockets. They might be really old, these motherboards. They sometimes don't come with a backplate. They don't sometimes come with an I.O. shield. Uh, sometimes the BIOS could be locked. Uh, the CPU might not be compatible uh, with that motherboard if it is BIOS locked and it's a proprietary motherboard that you're buying. So there's lots of components like capacitors, chips, MOSFETs, resistors, and traces that and slots on the motherboard that could be broken. You could have a dead uh, slot on the memory bank there. It could be, uh, you know, intermittent issues that you're having with that board. So there's lots that can go wrong with motherboards. And generally, they're pretty expensive to buy used on places like eBay. So be careful if you're looking to build used computers and flip them. In the UK, that is, it's very difficult to buy stuff cheap and flip it for a profit. And these are the things you need to look out for. So I would say motherboards are really sort of on the edge of not worth buying because I've seen these way overpriced and you can generally go and buy them brand new. Now, some of the older generations, I don't know why people would spend that amount of money. But if you look at the socket, if they're not showing you the socket like this, then you want to steer clear of that motherboard because sometimes I've seen people selling motherboards and they do have bent pins in here and if they have got bent pins or any sort of damage or anything like that you really don't want to buy any of that stuff let's move on to power supplies i personally don't recommend buying used power supplies they're normally cheap unbranded power supplies that people are selling or why are they selling it that's the thing a used power supply could be very problematic especially if it's really old uh, what is the age of that power supply you know, because the components inside them degrade over time, uh, thus decreasing uh, their capacity to provide good quality power to your computer. In addition, the power 
it does provide can also be unstable and this could cause major instabilities with your system. It could crash and you could end up with lots of problems. Some power supplies uh, that are so cheap they don't even come with a PCI Express cable on them. Does it come with all of the cables that are supposed to be with that particular modular power supply if it is a modular one? It could have been fixed or repaired. Does the person who sells them uh, own a, a repair shop and is he repairing these and then selling them on eBay? Some of these used ones here or some of these new ones are just cheap junk and I would not buy them at all. So I wouldn't recommend buying a used power supply if I'm completely honest. Moving on to the next one, which is GPUs. GPUs are probably one of the most expensive components to buy alongside uh, your CPU. And there's a lot of CPUs and GPUs for sale on eBay. GPUs are pretty expensive to buy, but you need to be very careful. A lot of these have been used in the cryptocurrency mining uh, boom. A lot of them are untested. There might not be no returns. If there's no returns, I definitely would not buy a GPU because you're shelling out a lot of money. Another thing to watch out for is there's a lot of reballers out there that are reballing uh, GPUs and then reselling them. You definitely don't want to be buying a GPU that has been reballed. A lot of them are overpriced in my personal experience. These are used items and they shouldn't be selling for the prices that they are selling on. Do they come with a warranty? Is there any warranty left on that GPU if it's a newer GPU? And these are the things you want to look out for. So again, it is the most expensive item and you want to make sure you get this right. Otherwise, uh, you know, you could be in big trouble, especially for some of the higher end GPUs that might be getting sold on places like eBay. So what should you look for really? If you are going to be purchasing one of these, make sure there is a returns policy on it. Also, you want to be seeing some sort of benchmarks and testing on it. If you can go there and test it, I would do that before buying any sort of GPU. And you should be testing it when you get home, running uh, programs like Furmark and seeing if there's any artifacting on the screen. You should have good, consistent temperatures for that GPU. If the temperatures are getting really high, then there could be problems with that GPU. So if you're getting crashing blue screens or anything like that, it should be going back. And these are the things that you need to check for if you are purchasing a GPU. Look on the back to see if there's any sort of oxidization or anything like that. What's the condition? Has it been cleaned too much and they are trying to con you into purchasing a super clean GPU? These are the things that you really want to look at. But I do recommend that used GPUs are worth buying as long as you follow that simple uh, process where you are testing it thoroughly. The problem is with places like eBay is you are buying it blind and you don't know uh, the sort of quality of that GPU and whether it's in good working order. The people that are clever at selling stuff will put untested, no returns, you buy it and again it could be problematic and causing loads of problems and they will say hey I did put untested and there's no returns and now you're stuck with it and it can be quite a costly uh, mistake to do so these are the things you need to look out for if you are buying something like a gpu because it is a lot of the money and just make sure it does exactly what it says on the tin don't get conned now monitors are another big problem for a lot of people and i do not recommend people just go out and buy them let me tell you why because monitors can age quite a bit and sometimes people might think they're getting a monitor that is pretty young but really it's pretty old and the display itself could be starting to show signs of wear and tear there could be ghosting burning also color fading uh you know geometric uh distortion dead pixels and also other things that could be wrong like bad ports on the actual monitor itself that might not be functioning properly there could be other issues uh, as well, like brightness and things like that. So you need to take a lot of these things into account when buying a monitor uh, from someone. So look at the actual picture itself. If they're not displaying the picture and they're not displaying video, then you really shouldn't be buying a monitor. And also some of them will pass it off with a 144 hertz or 120 hertz monitor and yet it could be a really old monitor, but people are only seeing the hertz. And that doesn't mean 
uh, that it's a really good monitor. It just means that they are saying it's 120 hertz. So is it old? And when was it made? You should be looking at any sort of bleeding around the screen, any blackening around the lamp and things like that. Is it an LCD? Is it an LED? Is it an OLED? You need to look into all of these things as well. So connector support is another big problem. I see a lot of people buying old monitors and they come on, they say they can't hit 144 hertz refresh rate on it. And that's because they're probably plugging it into the wrong port and there's only one port on there that is supporting that particular speed. So check to make sure that that port that you're using supports it on your computer and that it's not a really old monitor. Let me show you an example here of this particular one here. 120 hertz NVIDIA gaming monitor. Very vague, looks pretty good, but when you look at it, I can already tell you that's a really old monitor because it's quite chunky and quite fat. And it's certainly not worth £95. And you can see here, it was released in 2009. So it's going to have a few issues on it. And I definitely wouldn't be buying something like that of that age. And you definitely want to steer clear of anything like this. And these are the things you have to look out for. So personally, I wouldn't buy uh, monitors used. So let's talk about memory, whether it be laptop memory or PC memory. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what you're buying is a stick of memory or two sticks of memory. And the things that can be wrong with it are pretty difficult to diagnose. And the reason why is because what you're buying is a picture of two sticks of memory. And that's pretty much all you're buying. It does give you the specifications and things like that. But what you're not seeing is whether there is any intermittent issues with memory. And let me tell you, memory can cause a massive amount of problems with computers. And it's very hard to troubleshoot and diagnose. And sometimes the only way to troubleshoot and diagnose it is to replace it with a good known working stick of memory. So all these memory testing tools that you'll find, like MemTest, they do work, but they can take many, many hours to uh, do a test of the memory. And you need to make sure you're running it long enough to make sure the memory is fully functional. You can have intermittent issues with memory without knowing what's going on, like freezing, blue screens, and other things like that, which is causing major problems to your computer. These sometimes have only show themselves when you do gaming or when you do video editing and things like that. So bear that in mind. They're not showing you anything like this on the site when you're purchasing it. You are buying it blind. So for me, it's a 50-50 purchase. You really don't know what you're going to get. You could end up with two good sticks or some bad sticks. Let's talk about CPUs. Now, generally, CPUs are pretty safe to buy. They very rarely go wrong. Now, if it's an AMD processor, an early one, they had pins on them. You want to make sure the pins are not bent. Also, check the generation of that CPU to make sure it's not really old and you're buying a really old uh, CPU. Also, make sure that it fits the socket that you're putting it into. Uh, another thing is check the thermals on there. Sometimes they might delid these and put new thermal compound on them or even liquid metal. You want to steer clear of those CPUs that have been delidded. It's important that you make sure that there is a returns policy on this so you can return it if it's faulty. Has it been overclocked? Well, you're not going to probably know that it has been overclocked and it may have had, you know, a long life of overclocking. And if that's the case, then you definitely don't want to be buying an overclocked CPU. Now, the compatibility... Uh, is important and the socket's important. You need to make sure you get the right CPU for that particular socket. And if you are looking to upgrade a CPU that is on a proprietary system, bear in mind that the motherboard BIOS may be locked and you might not be able to upgrade the uh, CPU in that particular PC if it's one of those Dells, HP, or any of these other particular types of proprietary systems. So they're not as always as easy as it looks to upgrade the CPU on those systems. And, and these manufacturers make it very difficult to upgrade the CPU on those systems. And just don't overpay for you CPUs. Now, if it's a custom build, then generally you can upgrade the CPU on there. But again, if it's already at its maximum capacity, then obviously you won't be able to upgrade that CPU. So all in all, uh, you just have to be a bit careful when purchasing uh, items that are used. And remember, you are buying all of these items blind. You haven't had a chance to test it and you haven't seen it in full working order. So you're relying on the seller to be honest and tell you the full truth. Now, if they're not offering a returns policy 
and giving warranty for their items, then you probably shouldn't be buying it because you are running a risk. And especially if you're spending a lot of money on things like GPUs and CPUs and it's more modern hardware, then you need to make sure that there is a returns policy in place so you can easily return it. If it's one of these people that's saying it is what it is, sold a scene, then you probably shouldn't be buying that stuff. And you want plenty of good pictures to look at to see uh, whether there's any sort of damage or anything like that. You still won't be able to tell 100%, but at least try to get those listings that are uh, giving as much information as possible. And hopefully you can get a good deal. You should always be checking the price for new compared to used or old and see what the price difference is and see whether uh, you can actually buy it new. Because I've seen so many listings on places like eBay that are being sold at extortionate amounts of money and you can actually buy it new for an extra fiver or even less than what it is to buy you. So be very careful before you spend your money and buy uh, any item. Now, one thing I will say is if you're looking to get into this uh, PC flipping or buying stuff and flipping it, then bear in mind that you are going to get your fingers burnt. This is the used market and there's a lot of scammers out there as well as good honest people not everyone's a scammer but you just have to bear in mind that you are at some point going to get your fingers burnt it just happens now there is genuine sellers out there that are uh, sympathetic and they will offer a refund and sometimes offer you to send the item back but there's a lot of sellers out there that will take out claims against you and try to argue and they won't want to give you a refund and these are unfortunate bad side of ebay so be very careful if you're getting into this sort of stuff uh, because it's not as straightforward and easy as you might think. But that's not to say there isn't a deal out there because there is, but you just have to know what you're looking for and obviously take a bit of a risk. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to read those. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. And I'll catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.